Hey guys, Greg here with Lens Pro to Go, and in this video, we're gonna be checking out something a little bit different. A couple months ago, a guy named Oleg Sharanov reached out to me about a new program he had just finished developing called 3D LUT Creator. I checked out the website, some of the videos that he has up, and I was absolutely blown away with what this software could do. So I wanted to get some hands on with it and see how easy it was to actually manipulate the footage and photos using this software. He was kind enough to hook me up with a copy of the pro version. So that's what I'm gonna be showing you guys today, a quick overview of what this software is capable of. And in my opinion, it's the most powerful tool for color management and color editing that I've ever seen. So let's jump into 3D LUT Creator and get started. Soon you guys first open up 3D LUT Creator, this is gonna be the interface and it might look a little daunting at first, but don't worry about it. I'm gonna try and cover all this stuff as much as I can. So it'll open up in the A, B tab here and we're just gonna to wanna to go over to the channels and I'll run through all these for you. So this is what the channels tab looks like. This is your red, green, and blue channels. And I'm just gonna load up an image in here, make it a little bit easier for you guys to visualize. So as you know, red and green, if you're mixing light, make yellow, blue and red, make magenta, green and blue make cyan, and then you mix all three colors and you get white. So that's basically the same thing that's going on here. So if you grab the red channel and you shift it over towards the green, you're gonna be making all of the red pixels mix with green and now you'll have yellow. Same thing if we moved the green over to the blue, everything will start shifting towards cyan. If we went back the other way, the blue towards the green, same thing, it'll be shifting towards cyan. And then you'll have red, cyan, and white. So how does this actually help when you're editing photos? Let me just grab one and drop it in here. So really you're just messing around with the hues. So say I want all of the blues out of this image or I wanna shift the blues more towards green. Let's move the reds over, get those a little more orange. Just like that, so you can make a really cool color palette and I can switch back and forth. And all you're doing is adjusting the hues of specific colors to mix with other colors. Really simple, it's not super intuitive, like you kinda of have to play around with it and just sort of see what each color does as you move it. So if I move the red there, and I shift the blue over. And obviously you can make some stuff that's pretty crazy like this. You can also just have it randomize it for you if you want. So as I can just click here. So I'm right clicking and just saying, this is what I want to stay the same, change everything else. So it'll adjust them so that area stays the same. So I actually like that one too back. There you go, that's a pretty cool look. And uh, you can see on the graph here, it's kind of wild. I'd probably never make this on my own, but it's a neat thing that you can do with the channels tab. So let's reset that and let's jump over to volume. Now this one's pretty cool. So let me drop in a different image here. So here's just a shot of me. What this grid does is adjust the luminance level based on wherever you're dragging it. So if you drag it closer to the greens, it's going to brighten up the green colors, thus darkening the red and blue. If you bring it towards the red, it's gonna brighten up the red colors and darken the green and blue. And if you bring it towards the blue, it's gonna brighten that up and darken the green and red. So this is a fun little one to play around with and just be able to bring in some contrast using luminance only. So say I wanna have my face pop out a little bit more. So here's the after and there's the before. It does a really good job at separating those colors for you and all you have to do is move this little dot around and see what, uh, what you like. So let's reset that, let's go to the next tab. Now this is one that it opens up with and this is where I spend a lot of my time. I'm gonna change out the image here. Uh, and there's two different ways to look at this. So you can look at it in this spider grid or you can look at it in a standard square grid. I usually like to use this one, it's just a little bit easier for me to uh, visualize. I'm also gonna change it so it's a little more dense of a grid, which makes it easier to pick selections and you'll see why that's important in a second. So if you grab any one of these points, let's just say we grab this point in the center. Uh, this is the vector scope that you're seeing right here. So if we grab this one in the center, that's grabbing the whites. So we can do a color temperature shift in here. Say we wanna shift it a little more orange. We can do that and there's the after, this is the before, that's the after, before and after. And you can see that it's shifting all of the colors in the image. Let's say we wanna shift another specific color. So let's check out this orange bandana right here. Zoom in a little bit. So if I hover over it, you can see that it's picking out the specific pixels that I'm hovering over with the little X on the grid. Now if I go anywhere else, 
it'll jump over and do the same thing. So if I'm in here, these greens are where I'm hovering over. Let's say we want to adjust just the color of the bandana. So we can see it's hovering right around that point and it highlights it for us. So if we click that point, then we can start dragging that around and you'll see that the bandana starts to change. This would be really cool if it also didn't change the white balance of the whole image. So you can see we have a purple shift there going back and forth. So let's reset this. And now what we can do to lock that in so it's not gonna shift our white balance in the whole image is we can pin this center point. So I just left click on it there and it pins it. And then I can go back up again to this bandana area. So this is that orange area that the bandana is in. I can grab that point and then start shifting it around again. And now you'll notice it's not changing anything except that color of that orange. If I zoom out here a little bit, you can notice that some of the stuff in the background, which is close to that orange, is shifting. So this backpack over here, if you watch that as I push it around, that color is also changing a little bit. So say I don't want that to change either. What I can do is pin that, then I'm gonna go over here and see where that color is on the backpack. So it's right in this purple area. I'm just gonna pin that down, and then I'm gonna go up and grab the bandana area again, and now move that around. Now you'll see that backpack in the corner here is not changing colors, only the bandana. And you can do that for any color that you want if one's adjusting, so say it is shifting these greens a little bit, which it's not really because it's so close to that center pin we already put. We can just drop another pin, go back up here, and move the bandana again. And now none of those colors are gonna be changing. Now just to show you how powerful this is, I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see the bandana. Now if I push it way over here into this bright, bright purple, there is almost no artifacting in this image. And this is a JPEG, this is not a raw photo. So if I jump back and forth, there's the before and there's the after before, after. It does it seamlessly with no artifacting and there's no need to mask or do any of that stuff like you would have to do in Photoshop. So let's zoom out here and now let's jump over to the CL tab. So this is gonna be able to allow you to adjust contrast within a specific color or you can do like color tones. So if I rotate the axis angle here, look, just looking here, I'm going to the orange and teal. So now we have this orange and teal map right here. Orange, I'm actually gonna go a little bit further. So I want it to line up with the color of this bandana. I'm gonna show you something really cool here. So if we lock this center point, these are our neutrals going up in the center, and then we're going into the orange over here. So if I hover over, it'll tell me right where those oranges are. So this is the bandana. I'm gonna grab these two pins. I'm gonna drop this one down a little bit. And then I'm gonna bring this one up pretty high. So what I've just done is add contrast only in the bandana in that color range. So if I toggle that on and off, so that's without it, and that's with the contrast. Without, with, without, with. And you can do that for any of the colors. You can rotate this and do your green and purple. You can do your orange and blue or any other color that you want to that's in your image. The other neat thing, which I'm gonna jump back to another image here. If we reset this and we zoom in, the other thing that you can do is let's lock these center points again, just so we're not messing up our neutral colors. So the whites in the centers or the blacks on the outside. We can remove specific colors and have those hues shift towards another color. So there I just removed the purple and now we're left with our greens, yellows, orange, and blue or cyan colors. I can also bring over the green if I wanted to. So bring over the green highlights, the green shadows. And now we're just left with this teal and orange look. Now if I drop that picture of me that we used earlier, you'll see, I minus that out. You'll see the only colors in this image now are those cyan and orange colors but it's also affecting my skin tones here. So what we can do, if I reset this, I can hover over it, find where my skin tones are. So they're right in this area. So I'm just gonna pin a couple points around that to protect those skin tones. And if I'm over here, we're also getting a little bit into the purples. So these three points right here, just to make sure we save those. And even the lip color, yeah, let's lock the lip color in. So now what I've done is I've pinned those points to protect my skin tones and my lip color. And now I can do the same thing. So if I bring in 
these purples all the way to the center. So let's get rid of all the purple. And then we're getting rid of all of the greens, except those colors that are in my skin tones. And now if I jump back and forth, you can see it's saving all, pretty much all my skin tones. A little bit of the shadows are going orange, but everything else is that teal or orange color. Let's reset that. And next up, we're gonna go to our curves. Now this has the normal RGB and master curve. So if you're doing a contrast curve like this, you can bring up your whites and you can build in that contrast. The interesting thing that this one has is a luminance contrast curve. So if I'm bringing down these shadows here and you look at my shirt, you'll notice that the saturation doesn't change. Now, if we try and do that same thing in the RGB master curve, you're gonna notice that these blues are gonna get way more saturated. You can also see it in my lips and a lot on my skin. Now, if you don't want that, you can use the luminance curve and do the same thing just to bring down those levels without adjusting the color. The next special curve that they have in here is the saturation versus luminance. So you have your saturation on the vertical. So if I bring this up, you're gonna bring up the saturation. And then along this way is the luminance level. So this is the brightest points and these are the darkest points. So if I bring up the saturation here, that's bringing it up in the midtones. If I bring it up over here, that's bringing up saturation in the highlights. And if I bring it up down here, that's bringing up saturation in the darker areas. What I like to usually do in this tab is plot two points, one that's in the highlight area and one that's in the shadow area. And then I drop off the highlights and the shadows. Brings up this middle, so we'll just bring that back down. And now what this does is it protects the highlights, like the whitest points from having a color shift to it and it protects the shadows, the darkest areas, from having a color shift to them. So all the blacks in this image are truly black and all the whites in this image are truly white. You'll notice if I go back to, let's say this AB tab here, and I throw on a crazy green curve, you're gonna notice that the colors in here are still black and the whites are still white. You're not getting that color cast in those highlights and shadows. Let's go back to the curves. We'll reset that one. Next up is saturation versus saturation. So this is the saturation of the least saturated areas and this is the saturation of the most saturated areas. So if we pin a point in the center here and we bring up this bottom one, we're adding in saturation to the least saturated areas. So you're gonna notice that my face, the sky here, and these leaves in the back are starting to get a lot of saturation, but it's not affecting the more saturated areas like the shirt and the trees. So what we can do with this is if we wanted to level out the image a little more. So say my shirt was a little bit too saturated for me, I can bring that down and it's not gonna affect any of the other saturation. So it's a localized saturation adjustment instead of overall saturation bringing it down and then having these colors start to go black or gray. The last curve in here is the luminance versus saturation, just a switch of the saturation versus luminance curve. We have luminance vertically, so if I bring this curve up, it's gonna brighten up the image, down it's gonna darken it, and then we have saturation along the bottom here. So if I hover over this area, it'll show you exactly where the saturation levels are. So say I wanna brighten up my shirt, and it's a very saturated area, so if I go into this point right here and start bringing that up, I can brighten up the most saturated areas. I don't wanna affect the rest of this, so let's bring that point back down. And now if I go back and forth, I'm only brightening up the most saturated areas. So if I go back here, let's say I wanna brighten up my face a little bit, I can put a pin to lock it, and then my face is in this area, so I can brighten just that up. And then I can toggle it back and forth. And you can see it's not affecting the shirt at all because that is a more saturated area. The last thing that I'm gonna cover quickly is the 2D curves. I'm gonna throw on another image. So back to this image that we were using at the beginning, what we can do is analyze it using the little mouse. We can scrub over it and see where specific colors are. So let's say these orange leaves up here, we can see exactly in all of these charts where they are. So this is a red versus blue chart, green versus red, and then green versus blue. So you have all your RGB colors in here. Now this one's gonna be a little bit hard to explain. I don't know if I'm gonna do it justice, but I'm just gonna show you a quick example of what you can do with this chart. So I'm gonna pick these oranges here and I'm gonna look for the one that's the farthest away from this center line. 
So these are your neutrals in the center. And what I can do to protect all of those, so as I'm adjusting these, it's not gonna affect those neutral colors, is pin all neutrals. Now I'm gonna go over here, see where that is, and I'm gonna look for the one that has the dot farthest away with a red on the graph, because I wanna make these a little more red. So this one right here is looking at, it's like in this area. So if I start grabbing that point and pushing it out, I can be adding saturation to only the orange area. Oops, jumped around there. So if I toggle that on and off, there's without and there's with. So that's adding in contrast and saturation into that area. Now, let's say we want to adjust this water here. We want to make this a little more blue. So I'm going to look for one that has blue on it, and then that is the farthest away from the neutrals because that's going to give me the cleanest control. So it looks like right up in here on this blue and red graph is probably the best option. So I'm just going to pull this to the side, pull this more towards that blue color, and you're going to see that come in into that water. Now, if I go back and forth, you can see I'm saturating the blues and those oranges and reds. Now, say we want to shift the color of this green over here. I'm going to go down to this green and blue tab, and then I can start playing around with some of these points. If I move these points vertical, it's going to brighten up that area. If I move it down, it's going to darken it. So I can really dial in my contrast in specific colors and tones. So there's the before, and there's the after. I'm just going to reset that. I'm going to go into masks. Now this one I'm not going to talk too much about because I haven't really gotten into it, but basically you can mask based off the histogram and there's a ton of different options in here uh, for all the different color channels and, and color spaces. Uh, so you can preview it here and then just by moving, moving these nodes around, you can select specific things that will affect the areas that you've changed. So if I push these colors over, let's turn off the preview on the mask you can see that that's only going into that area. It's not affecting like these greens over here. And I can even dial it in a little bit less. So you can see that's only going into the highlights right now. I haven't, again, I haven't played around with this too much, so definitely go and play around with that on your own and see what you can do with it. So that's a quick look and overview of 3D LUT Creator. If you guys are interested in this software, head on over to 3dlutcreator.com. You can download a demo from there and try it out for yourself. And in the comments below, let me know what you guys think of this software. I was absolutely blown away the first time I saw it, so I'd love to hear what you guys think. Also, I'm going to put some links in the description below to Oleg's YouTube page. He has a bunch of tutorials on there, so if you guys want to get started, that'll definitely help you out. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button, like this video, and subscribe if you're not already. And I'll see you guys in the next one.